and as you are able and sing him in number 174 at the Lamb's High Feast.
that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from the book of Acts. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout the year, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read together Psalm 118 as printed on your bulletin insert. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. The praises of him now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation. Today's reading comes from the book of Colossians. Since you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. 
Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Understand and sing joyfully, and we will not be.
They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who were you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabomi, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them when he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Friends, let us pray. In the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts, be always acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Mind blown. I don't think there's any other way to describe this moment of the gospel. A man was killed in a gruesome act of government violence. All his friends saw it happen. They saw the body removed from the cross. They knew he was put in a tomb. There was a large stone rolled in front of it. That's the end of the story, right? But then, you're right, you said no, <laughs> because then, John has this gospel story that while it was still dark, something incredible happened. Mary goes to the tomb. Now maybe she was there to pay more respects, to continue grieving the loss of her teacher and friend. And when she gets there, what? But where's the stone? What's going on here? And then something like pandemonium erupts, and she goes running off to tell Peter, and then Peter and the uh, other disciple whom Jesus loved, probably John, dash off to see what's happening at Jesus' tomb. They get into a foot race with one another, and, and then, what? Where's the body? The, the wrappings, the, the cloth wrappings around his head and, and his body, they're, 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 they're just tossed aside. Who has unbound Jesus? Where is he? Mystify Peter and uh, disciple, what's his name, just go home. They, they just go home. Mary Magdalene, on the other hand, can't leave. This whole thing makes no sense. It's so shocking. She begins to cry. Woman, why are you weeping? Why is she weeping? Why wouldn't she be weeping? And who are you, you two angels? Woman, why are you weeping? Oh great, here comes some other dude with that same question. Good grief, why wouldn't she be crying? We can hear the exasperation in her voice, something like, look buddy, I don't know who you are, but if you know who made off with, and then he interrupts her, Mary, 
wait, wait a minute. Is it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Mind blown. This moment, this incredible moment, jolted everyone who had followed Jesus, believed in his teachings, and were in such a state of emotional distress over his death. And now, vindication, victory. Let the song of triumph begin. He did it. He really did it. He really has risen on the third day. Amen. Amen. It's not surprising that all of Jesus' closest associates were having these moments of shock and awe. I think that we can all understand how stunning it can be when we think that things are a certain way and then something totally unexpected flips the script. It reminds me of a song by Sweet Honey in the Rock, which starts, Don't no one know at sunrise how this day is going to end. It can be so easy for us to be so caught up in our own stuff, our own way of living and perceiving the world, that we can easily miss those moments when God appears before us. Perhaps that's why the resurrection had to be this so over the top incredible. Sometimes God really has to do things to shake us up to get our attention. Nothing like raising somebody from the dead to do that. And it's not as if Jesus was the first dead person to rise from the dead. In John's Gospel, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, commands Lazarus to come out of his tomb, and then Jesus has to look around and tell others to unbind Lazarus. Get that man out of all those death wrappings. But now, in this resurrection, no one unbinds Jesus. Jesus is unbound. Amen. Amen. God the Son, the Word made flesh, is free. God has liberated Jesus once and for all, and we declare in a loud voice, Alleluia! Alleluia! Thank you! By extension, and in that way in which laws of gravity, time, and space really mean nothing to God, this resurrection is a sign that our Creator has liberated us as well. Everyone who has a part in the body of Christ through our baptism, through partaking of the Eucharist, are just as much a part of this resurrection as Jesus. We, like Jesus, have gone down into the grave, figuratively speaking. We experience our own sufferings in our lives. Some have felt the sting of rejection. Others find themselves locked in battles with bullies and tyrants. We've suffered losses of friends and family members. But just as God was never far from Jesus on the cross, the Holy One is never far from us. And the promise fulfilled on this day is that for every Good Friday moment we've endured, Easter will happen. God will be there to unbind us. And Jesus stands as the greatest liberator from oppression ever. Now, there's another interesting part of this gospel message from John. When Mary recognizes the voice of her shepherd, her teacher, the immediate response is not only her exclamation of Laboni, but in her rapture, she's ready to hang on to Jesus. Having lost him once, she's ready to cling to him so that he never gets away again. But Jesus tells her, don't hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. 
But go to my brothers and say that I am ascending to my Father. Go on, Mary. Go preach. Go tell the story of what you've seen, what you've experienced. Tell the brothers how you've been blown away by Amen. all of this. Just like Mary Magdalene, we are called to share this phenomenally good news with others. Not with bullhorns or whacking people over the head with the Bible. In the words of the great theologian Rocky the Flying Squirrel from the Bullwinkle cartoons, that trick never works. God doesn't need us to scream at or beat people up with this news. But each of us does have a story to share. Consider these things. What have you learned about yourself through whatever Lenten practice you've had over the past several weeks? Or, in what ways has God's love manifested for you during this Lent and Holy Week? Or even, what is it about this story of Easter and the resurrection that roused you out of bed this morning to come to church and listen to this wild ride of a story? Whatever it is that has moved us to be here in the presence of God on this day of celebrating the resurrection of Jesus, that's our story. That's our song. And it's meant to be shared. Sing that song to the person who has lost their voice or has been made weary from a world that keeps trying to drown them out. Tell it to the person who turns to you when they need a kind word from a friend, a word grounded in the spirit that knows what it is to have the trusted companions deny and betray them. Live it by knowing that God has loved all of us, every single one of us, without conditions or blackout dates or asterisks, and has loved us back to life. That is the wonderfully mind-blowing story of this day. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is risen, risen indeed. Hallelujah. The prayers of the people can be found in your moment to answer. We pray for the church throughout the world. Draw us together in unity and compassion. Help us to walk in the path of our biblical ancestors as we are reaching out and adding to the family of Christ. Hallelujah. Christ, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of this nation and all the communities of the world. Help them to find direction and hear your voice as they shepherd your people through the gateway of peace and mercy. Hallelujah. This is Christ, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the awe and splendor of your creation that springs forth in new life. Help us to protect and preserve the gifts of your creation for future generations. Hallelujah. This is Christ. Hear our prayer. We pray for all in our community, especially for those facing hunger, poverty, and lack of housing and health resources. Help us to be your vessel, reaching out to those in need, so that they may see you and the wonders you provide. Hallelujah. Risen Christ. Christ, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick or in any kind of trouble, especially Diane, Linda, Mars, Lynn, Carla, Nick, Sarah, George, Zachary, Renee, Hope, Tom, Jeff, Michael, Genevieve, the Fox family, Trinity, Zan, Pat, Donald, Betty Mae, Jean, Arthur, Tom, Rebecca, Melanie, Cyrus, Avery, Danny, Sarah, Mike, Gilbert, Kathleen, Jerry, Sheila, Gary, 
Glenn, the Reverend Cal Wiseman, his family, and the Noel family. Deliver them from anger, hurt, fear, and sadness. Provide them with your promise that you are always with them, O shepherd of those in need. Hallelujah. Christ, 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 Christ. Christ. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the congregation in Dublin, Christ Church, for our ecumenical partners in Dublin, especially Immaculate Conception Catholic Church, and our companion diocese of the Dominican Republic, we pray for St. Thomas and Gautier. May they continue to bring light to their communities. Hallelujah. Risen Christ, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, especially Lindy and Marie and Colleen Faisal. May they dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Risen Christ, Christ, hear our prayer. You may add your own prayers at this time, either aloud or silently. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church. And give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet each other in peace. Say the prayer for you. 
Um, if you are wanting to come forward and not receive communion, but you want to receive a blessing, just put your arms across your chest like this, and then I'll know that that's what you want. And, of course, this is not my table. This is God's table. So anyone who is baptized is welcome to this table. And um, I will tell you, I do not check your baptismal identification at the ramp. So you, you could fool me if you're not actually baptized. <laughs> Uh, but that's that's the that's the procedure that we use. Is there anything else that I have not said that needs to be said? Any other announcements for the good of the order? Okay. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
prayer of duty, found on page 372 in the Book of Common Prayer.
took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
redeemed us and made us his children through the res resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to eternal inherit to his eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.